Hello and welcome to all of you out there and I want to give you a huge hug and a virtual hug here and thank you so much. Thank you so much. You are the kindest of the kindest of the kindest people who, who, are, who have been reaching out to me and giving me all these advices around my style problem that I'm having still going on but improved so much and I'm sure I'm sure it has to do with all the love that I've received recently. I know it's virtual, um, but hey, it's real. And thank you so much for that. Um, it's not so much that I, I, I'm going to do videos no matter what, you know, how I look. It's not about, I don't care about that. Uh, without, with or without makeup on or, or with, I mean, spots like this or not. I don't care. This is not about my looks. This is about my content. But um, it was painful. It was painful when I just concentrated and the pain is gone. So that's good. And I, I was really impressed by a lot of uh, you guys out there. Um, a lot of um, the advices from all kinds of angles. And I love that. I love that because I'm a person that wants to work on different angles, you know, on the physical level, the emotional level, the psychological level maybe i'm gonna do a video on that if you want that do the comments but other than that let's get to this video it's not about me it's about astrology isn't it right this channel is about astrology and it's about the total um eclipse the solar eclipse that i'm going to talk about on the 30th of april but you feel it a couple of months before even a couple of months after but round and about the 30th of april what's going to happen the sun and the moon are going to be at 10 degrees of taurus together with uranus 14 degrees of taurus together with the north node the north node is at the end of taurus but it's still seen as an eclipse and uh, a part, it's not a total eclipse, by the way, it's a partial eclipse. That's why it's a partial eclipse, you know, it's quite further away at, I think, 25 degrees or something like that, 24, 25 degrees of Taurus, and the sun is at 10 degrees, but it's still in the same sign, so therefore, it's an eclipse. Now, this belongs to this, I'm going to do an intro, and then for all the signs, so this belongs to the Saro cycle, uh, 6 north, and this eclipse is all about responsibility. So whether it is a good eclipse, a bad eclipse, or whatever you want to name it, the weather forecast is here. Very, very uh, interestingly, if you take your responsibility on a particular area of your life, which I'm going to say in a minute, if you're going to take responsibility, you're going to be in the seat, in the, in the driver's seat yourself, you're going to have huge, huge steps forwards in your life and you're going to enjoy it. There's going to be a bit, little bit of magic even. I'm, I'm not kidding. This is uh, this, uh, the ruler, uh, Venus, is in the sign of Pisces. And in itself, this eclipse is not a bad one, uh, considering what the other energies are doing. I mean, in general, not specifically for you or someone else, but in general, it's good energy yes it's with uranus so expect the unexpected with uranus is gonna ha but if you embrace uranus which is do new stuff that you've never done before don't be afraid of new things don't be afraid of change or you can be afraid of it but do it anyway you know the courageousness and the excitement see see fear as excitement rather than running away from it if you embrace that in little steps, basic, basic, it's Taurus, it's slowly but surely. If you're going to do that, you're really, really going to have something really good happening in your life. And um, that's the spirit, that's the intention. You can, the intention is very important here. And Venus, its ruler, is with Jupiter and Neptune. And this is, it's squashed, but, uh, sandwiched between, squashed, sandwiched between Jupiter and Neptune in Pisces, so it's it's very much very happy there. Very much the downside you could say is that it doesn't see what there is in front of them, or it only sees what they want to see. But that's only happening when you've got really bad aspects going on, and that's not the case. Unless, of course, again, personal horoscopes. You know, you could be having this in an opposition in a square, and so on. Check out the 
monthly horoscopes if you want to go a bit more in depth for the whole picture. But this eclipse is a very uh, bright one. A very It's a new beginning because it's the north node with the sun and the moon. That means pointers towards newness. That's where you need to go. You need to let go of the Scorpio stuff. But you need to go where Taurus is, okay? So new opportunities, new beginning. A new moon is always a new beginning. Every single month we have a new moon. But with the north node, emphasizing. Good. Let's talk about this really short, concise, precise Aries people. This is happening in your second house. So for Aries people, this is not the most important eclipse, but it's happening in your sector of finances, your sector of um, everything that belongs to you, what you own, but also your self-worth. So that could mean there is a new start, there is a new thing that you uh, might buy, that is going to be very important for you in the long run. So, um, and it could be all of a sudden. It could also mean a drastic change that you make in your finances so that you can improve it. And again, remember what I said in the beginning, responsibility. If you put your head in the sand when it comes to your finance areas, people, it's not going to work. Be very, very down to earth. That is what Taurus is all about. And there could be some help of good friends, you know, with Venus, Jupiter, Neptune in your um, what am I saying? No, 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 no. That's not, <laughs> I hope you have good friends, by the way. But you could be help, getting help. It's even, it's also our friends, but it's the not, the not seen friends. It's that Jupiter, Neptune in your 12th house, that is getting help from the unseen world. What do you call it? Um, uh, divine, what do you call it? Nature, what do you call it? God, pray. I know it sounds silly, but do pray and it's, it's really because when you're praying energetically, you're, you're um, saying that you don't have to take all responsibility that you can have, that you have no control over. So you give it away to the cosmos if you, if you like, the things that are out of your control, if you're doing that. But of course, doing your responsibility on the money level, doing your work when it comes to your confidence. I mean, self-confidence grows by, you know, it's like what we say to our children by doing things that are not so easy. You're really pretty good at that because Aries is one of the courageous, most courageous signs of the zodiac. So this is really good for you for improving your financial situation, for improving your confidence that comes from self not from others they don't have to say oh you're good you're good that's nice that's nice but it's not from within anyway taurus <laughs> this is all for you right if you have a birthday around the 30th of april whoa boy that's gonna be wow a year to never forget other taurians as well this is an important time for you this is all about you i've been saying that for so long this is all about you this is all about what do you like what do you want but also taking responsibility if people are not going to like it, you know. And that is the problem that a lot of Tarians have because they, these people, they don't like it when other people are mad at them. And that's understandable. But now your ruler Venus is in the 11th house. So you're going to get the approval of people that are like-minded, of people that uh, friends, associations and so on. That could be even help and... but emotional understanding from friends and vice versa so go out with your friends as much as you can during this period enjoy them they, they are um, they having your best interest and so do you and you grow together tremendously because you need them you need them because you are changing and you've got you you need to have some people that are supporting you right? Because there is a new you emerging, for sure, for sure. With Uranus there, it's all of a sudden and people are going to say, Woo, she or he is a little bit more Uranian, you know, uh, a little bit more, this is my way or the highway. But in some situation, it is needed. It is needed. So go for it. Go for it. It's going to shift your relationships for sure. But it's for the long run, it's the better. It's being real. It's being authentic. It's being you, basically beautiful how beautiful that is 
Gemini, this is happening in your 12th house. So this is a hidden eclipse, you could say. This is about with the North node there. It's actually you have to go into the 12th house. In other words, you have to, well, I, I, I hate to say you have to because, you know, um, if you can, let's put it that way to relax and to decontract or to, um, to, you could say, reload the batteries. It's kind of important. Yes, there is a lot of new creativity happening in your work area because you've got that Venus there with Jupiter and Neptune in your 10th house. So to say the least, if you have a job or you want to work or you're working, this is using your creativity. Or this might be a female or a man who's got like this very female traits, which is possible, that is helping you out in some sort of way. Um, and doing that very unconditionally. Um, welcome that. Welcome that for sure. It can also mean one of your parents that you're, you know, there is compassion there, which is also beautiful. But first and foremost, it's about really putting a light and a new beginning, you could say, towards how you relax, how you reload your batteries, and also a new beginning around a clearing up of all the old baggage that you've been carrying along with you. Um, it's a lot of karmic. It's, it's like a karmic. It could really feel like I'm getting a, um, how do you say that? A boot up, a boot up. My English at times, it gets worse and worse. Um, a, a boost up, a, a reboot, a reboot that you're getting with uh, that eclipse there. Enjoy that. Cancerians, this is a happy eclipse for you because um, it's in your 11th house. That is a very enjoyable house. It's a house of friends. It's a house of aspirations. It's a house of hope. It's a house of hope. So think about new beginnings around friends and also new beginnings around your goals for the future. So that could be a really um, an idea that is like getting there out of the blue that you say, yes, that is what I want to do for my future. Maybe you are a younger person or maybe not so young person and you've got some new ideas. If they're a bit weird or people are saying, oh, what are you going to do? Do it. So take your responsibility when you're having new aspirations. Also friends, you know, that could be like very Iranian friends. I've been talking about that for a while because Uranus is there already for a long time. But embrace them when they are a bit not like you. They can just tell you a lot, basically. And this Venus is in your ninth house with Jupiter and Neptune. Ninth house is travel. Go if you can. If you have the means for it, go and travel. It's going to help you there. You could be, um, if you're single, you could be falling in love. Um, if you are not single, you could have really a good time by doing some cultural stuff even and uh, enjoying yourself. Leo, this is happening in the 10th house, which is the highest point of your horoscope. New beginnings when it comes to your work. All of a sudden, maybe you want a bit more independence. Go for it, go for it, but take responsibility. Take responsibility. That's going to have consequences. Yeah, be real. Be real. And um, it could also mean a new start in the life of a parent or a new uh, start around your idea around parents, a new start when it comes to your social status. So from married to, uh, well, I, I wanted to say from not married to married, but also from married to not married, maybe, you know, all kinds of stuff possible but it's fresh it is new it is um with new hope there and that venus and jupiter and all of that it's it's all in your eighth house so this is a very deep house so there could be healing happening for you um a battling of fears that could be dead and a rebirth and that gives all kinds of new beginnings for you it could also mean a deep psychological understanding of the self and that you embrace yourself better, especially the darker shadow part of the self. Doing shadow work basically would go a little bit easier there. And uh, it's meeting the good, the bad and the ugly of the self, embracing that. And therefore, it is easier for you to, to start this whole new beginning in your life. Because it, the midheaven is like a second descendant. And it's like you having this opportunity 
of starting all over again and you profiling yourself in a different way. Now, Virgo, this is uh, very pleasant uh, because uh, this eclipse is happening in a fellow earth sign in your ninth house. So new beginnings there all of a sudden could be travels. It could be uh, studies. It could be you teaching. It could be writing, publishing. Um, it could also feel as if you have a very real uh, connection with the divine and you feel an element of everything and that gives you hope. The ninth house is a very hopeful house by the way so it's going to give you a boost and Venus is in the seventh house of relationships so it could mean that because all this new stuff is happening in the ninth house you feel very good around your relationships and of course those of you who've got Neptune opposing Virgo directly which would be if you are a Virgo that has a birthday around 14 up until the 18th of September you have to be really careful of not being in la la land remember but if you know it you can't go wrong you enjoy it and you um, enjoy your relationships full of understanding full of understanding and compassion and it's vice versa it's lovely Librans this is happening in your eighth house this is a really interesting house for you because it has to do with the resources of other people so that could be a new beginning um, that you invest with another person and um, you do some investments or you do or your um, the eight house is also money of other people you could get a tax return an inheritance and it's a bit of this uranus thing it's all of a sudden happening there um, and its ruler is in the sixth house, so it could also be related to your day-to-day -day work. Uh, it could also be related to your routines and to your health. So when it comes to your health and when it comes to your day-to-day -day work, there is a tendency of being more go with the flow, which is nice, and also about your routines that they're not so difficult for you to take and that you're enjoying it a little bit more also work but main thing is if there is something new that has to do also with intimacy maybe you just went in you, you just started a new relationship and now all of a sudden there's great intimacy and it's very real it's very sensual you know in Taurus it's with Uranus it's a bit a bit uh, out of the blue there um, enjoy it you know enjoy it it's also interesting now to start some a new study when it comes to the metaphysical side of life you scorpios out there huge huge this is happening in your opposite uh, house which is the seventh house of this is all about relationships so it's about a new start there um so if you're saying but hey i'm in a relationship already i don't want a new one it could mean how you look at relationships and it could mean that your existing relationship there is some new start that you're getting and it's out of the blue it's all of a sudden it's about that other person is changing and you can do two things go along with them or not that's your choice that's your free will that you have and um but definitely that could you know if you're open for that there could be new people coming into your life very uranian people so they are a lot about their freedom very exciting if you're not projecting that too much and if you incorporate that in your own life you could be really really having the most exciting relationships and also long during i know a lot of people say or a lot of astrology say uranus is not long lasting it's not true it's how you see it it's not long lasting when you're, when you're not embracing it right when you are embracing it it could be very long lasting so, um, but that's for another video about Uranus. But anyway, some sort of a new beginning, a new person. Don't be, it could mean that you're a bit afraid of it, but um, it's interesting and it's, it's so romantic for you. My goodness me, with Venus there in your fifth house, with Jupiter and Neptune, for those of you who are single, this could be it. This could really be mind blowing. This could be, um, I would strongly recommend if you are single and you're open for love, go out there, have fun, go with your friends, cinema, cafe, restaurant, whatever. Uh, certainly um, enjoying yourself or doing a nice hobby and where you meet people because this is very social. And um, this could be really, really romantic and really almost healing energy there um, that the people that you are dealing with. So 
But first and foremost, you need to let go something of yourself. Remember, the south node is in your sign. So an old narrative that you're, you know, narratives that you're talking about in your head, the narratives, the, the speaker that is speaking in your head, which is you, probably, mostly, um, it needs to shift. There's something negative there that needs to, or not, not necessarily negative, but it's old fashioned. It needs to go and therefore be open for the rest. Sagittarians, this is in your sixth house. This is in your day-to-day -day life. This new beginning, this is in your health. And uh, new routines could be starting here out of the blue, a bit alternative because it's Uranus. You could be doing some new stuff. I'm a Sagittarius rising and I feel that already now because of some problems like me. You're, it, it doesn't have to be problems, by the way, but you know, you're having some eye problems there and you kind of start digging and there's a new beginning there of how you do your life in general. I mean, the routines that you do, the stuff that you do how many meals you have a day or not, or, you know, that kind of thing. The healthiness and mental health, but very much physical health here because it's in Taurus. So um, you could be dealing with this new start of a um, regime that you're doing or a new start with exercises, whatever it is. It's such a good, such a good timing here. And, but also for work. So if you want a new, um, a new work, starting a new work, it's on, it's on. Venus, its ruler, is in the fourth house. So you should be feeling good at home because you are nurturing yourself. And um, you're being a good mom and dad to, a, to, to yourself. And this is really, really nurturing for you with this Venus, Jupiter, Neptune there. Uh, Capricorns, this is your fellow Earth sign. This is happening in your fifth house. This is fantastic for you, this eclipse. There could be a new romance starting. There could be a child, a new child, or there could be a new beginning in the life of your child and you really, really are very excited about it or a new hobby that you want to start Do it. This is the fantastic timing for it. When it's going to be a new romance, this could be really, woo, your heart going like this. And it's super, super exciting, but it's okay. It's, it's not that it's all over the place up in the air. It's very down to earth because it's in Taurus and Venus is in your third house. So you could be meeting someone by online or in the neighborhood or uh, because you're uh, do, learning something new, you're going to a workshop and you meet someone new um, on another level if you're already in a Existing relationship, this could really mean that you're exploring new hobbies, you're exploring new sports that you want to do and uh, that you really, really like. It's a very hard energy uh, for you. I hope this didn't go... But anyway, um, very nice eclipse for you, full of new, embrace the new beginnings and doing something that you've never done before. So this is not about a hobby that you've done years ago. No, no, no. New, something new, something really brand new. Aquarian, super important for you. This is all about your emotional well-being. This is happening in your fourth house. With Uranus there in your fourth house, you know, this is a bit unsettling. But now this is new opportunities for a new home. So I've seen a lot of Aquarian risings in particular, but also Aquarians um, selling their homes and, and into new homes. And it had to, they had to go through a little bit of a, um, of a, you could say nervous energy there because of Uranus. But now you have a new opportunity to get um, on that solid ground, so to speak, figuratively and literally, and to start a new beginning. If it doesn't have to do anything with home and renovating and whatnot, it could mean on an emotional basis that you're rooting. Definitely. In a bit of an alternative way, but you're starting a new beginning towards how you look at your parents, first and foremost, and that gives you a new understanding of the self and how you deal with the self, how to nurture, being your own mom and dad, basically, and doing it your way and doing it in a very nurturing way. Venus is in your second house of self-worth. This is all about your self-worth as well. You can't grow. Take responsibility there. Take responsibility in your emotional stability. Don't blame it on others. I'm not saying that you're doing it, but it's certainly not the energy now to do so, of blaming it to others. Yes, others might do you wrong and whatnot, but you can only do you, and you can only make sure that you are getting in that nice, 
vibration and you have an impact, you can do that too. You're not God, but you have free will and you can do that. Very, very healing energy, by the way, for these Aquarians and uh, really, really liking it in improving um, your self-worth. You know, if your self-worth has been low, this could mean like you're almost not, this is like magic, where is it coming from? But it has come from the things that you did in the long run, you know, year after year after year. And last but not least, the Pisces, this is in your third house. This is enjoyable. This is about a new study, a new, maybe a short trip that you're taking and it opens up your, your mind, basically, because it's a mind house. This could mean a new website that you're creating. When you're having your own business, do new stuff, do Uranian stuff, do something with computers. And even if you're a bit afraid of it, but do so. Ask someone who can help you. Um, and who is the one that is going to uh, be emphasized here? You, because you've got that Venus there in your sign. It's all about you. It's all about being you. Uh, you're going to be so magnetic. I mean, Pisces in itself, they are very magnetic because it's so such a yin energy. But um, now it's by doing this third house stuff, which is again learn, uh, learning, teaching, reading, uh, writing, uh, a lot of communication in the neighborhood, short trips and all of that. Enjoy it to the fullest. It's a very kind energy for you, um, for you as a Piscean. And um, enjoy that time of you being content with you. We all have our times that we are not content with ourselves. But this with Venus in your sign is being more compassionate towards the good, the bad, and the ugly in the self. And that's going to make you so magnetic, even more than you are already uh, for other people as well, because they are going to feel your soothing, beautiful Piscean magical energy that we... I, I'm thinking of that song of Olivia Lilton John, which is uh, magic, you know. You know that song? It, it reminds me of that. I think she talks about astrology as well in that song. I'm not quite sure. Check it out. And if you're interested, leave a comment below. Thanks again for all of your, your warmth and all of your attention and sharing my videos. It's almost 50,000 subscribers. Do you have any idea what to do when I'm reaching it? You know, I, I yeah, I certainly am open to some ideas coming from you guys out there. Again, have a very happy Easter. I hope it was helpful. This little video, all the best. Bye-bye.